Welcome to Stellaris Ancient Relics and to this Max Crisis Max Difficulty Challenge on Grand Admiral where we're going to roleplay the Seekers of Nautilon, seeking for their holy snail and becoming the Uber Snails is one of uh, their quests and uh, we'll see if they can take over the galaxy. They are an empire with inward perfection and an exalted priesthood. And of course I have to thank the exalted priesthood or program hood of Paradox that gave me this copy for free so I could present it to you a little bit before the official release. So our little snails are a little bit afraid of other aliens because they're so tiny fleeting and everyone thinks their slime stinks. So they're a little bit xenophobe, they're pacifist, they just don't, they don't just want to be left alone. And they're spiritualists, they believe, are bound into uh, the power of their great god Nautilon that has led them to this galaxy from another galaxy that was on their heels. So now they will be starting their quest. What can you expect from this? We will have... Well, of course, in the late game, we'll have the Maxed Crisis. That will be very interesting to look at. At the start, we'll have very strong opponents. And uh, not only like saying because of the high difficulty, but also because uh, the viewers of my channel made some custom empires directly for this Let's Roleplay and the Survival Challenge. So uh, we'll have a good time. They're also the winners of the Stellaris Grand AI Tournament of the Megacorp Edition are there, like the first three or four empires I included. So uh, <laughs> there's going to be AIs that really rock it. And uh, what we will do as the Seekers of Nautilon is we want to find Nautilon. We want to become the Uber Snails. We want to settle the galaxy and explore it as much as we can. We want to find traces of Nautilon, aka seeking ancient relics that could lead us to the trace of this god snail. So, without further ado, let's select them and let's look at our empire. We'll go for a huge empire uh, uh, galaxy with elliptical shape we'll make oh let's say 25 empires i think that's about the number we have that were pre-made by the users so we want to have mainly them we don't want to have advanced ai starts at the moment that's a little bit hard in a in a totally new environment because some rules have changed and it's it's not only the big things it's also the tiny things that matter there have been a lot of improvements already the, the start of this game was much quicker than usual. So we'll have fallen empires, the more the merrier. Marauder empires, the more the merrier. I really like them to awaken and do some trouble. So we'll have as many of them as possible. Tech, tradition, costs, habitable worlds, we'll leave that as normal primitive civilizations. I love these. We will not enlighten them because we are xenophobes, but I want to include a lot of them because it's fun. Then we'll have crisis strength. We'll have that at the maximum of the official slider. We have the mid-game start year, end-game start year. We'll have that as usual. We'll have the victory year off. So we can continue until someone tri is triumphant. Difficulty will be Grand Admiral. Scaling difficulty will be off. So the AI empires will be as strong as possible from the start. AI aggressiveness normal so that the game behaves normally. Empire placement is random. Advanced neighbors are off. Well, we don't have advanced uh, starters anyways except for of course the fallen empires and the marauder ones hyperlane density abandoned gateways wormhole pairs all standard guaranteed habitable worlds that is the default and we'll leave that on caravan years yeah i love them we'll have them on iron man mode i'll have that off for obvious reasons when you're doing a let's play you want to be able to load just in case and that sometimes happens you forget to record the recording crashes your hard drive is full, <laughs> everything like that can happen and then just want to have that uh, available to reload, but I'll usually not reload even if I make terrible mistakes. I'm prone to that, I need, need to warn you, I'm prone to terrible mistakes at the start, I always start really bad <laughs> and then uh, we'll usually win it in in the, in the coming years, so... Uh, 
there's that. I'll try to amend that this time, though, and be really strong from the start. Mm -hmm. So, let's go. I have not reviewed this galaxy before. I have not seen which <laughs> researchers we get. Let's go. Ah, it feels so great. Ancient Relics is going to be... I'm really enthused about this. It, it's not only a story pack, it also adds great mechanics. And uh, look! Now, I have made an official intro for this. It's a let's roleplay after all. And usually the episodes will get a little, little roleplay intro. But now, if you're interested, you can look at, for it in the playlist. I've linked the playlist in the description below. Mm, but we'll read this because I really like to see if they've changed something in the automatic description. The Seekers of Nautilon, a theocratic dictatorship, which means uh, one of our snails, after the death of the former ruler snail, will be selected by the elder priests after uh, his blood's color and his genetic setup, because they are searching to become the uber snails, because only when they become the uber snails and... Uh, have made the galaxy safe again, then their giant god Nautilon will appear. So, um, you can see we are xenophobe, pacifist, spiritualist, inward perfection, exalted priesthood, which gives us high priests instead of administrators, giving us a little bit more unity and society research. Then we have the traits extremely adaptive and rapid breeders, so the snails are not really that strong, they are weak, they are fleeting, less lifespan, they are repugnant, so uh, they can be a little bit annoying in their obsession, which is what reflects this. So in the eons, since the first primitive Nautiloid communities took shape, now that's not, we are going, coming from another galaxy that was on our heels. We fled here and we are ready to found the new colony. Yeah. Many false prophets took it upon themselves to offer spiritual guidance to our people as we advanced through the ages, but the true faith prevailed, indeed. The last heathen strongholds were vanquished after several blood crusades, because the snails are always looking for the ones with the bluest blood to lead them. Uniting us under the holy will of a single divine leader with the bluest glowing blood. After the discovery of the Hyperlane network in this new galaxy, the finest minds of the Freshly arrived Seekers of Nautilum has finished development on the first new hyperdrives of this galaxy. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp. Here we go. And let's see what our setup is. Well, let's first have a look at our Savannah planet. Look, that's our leader Ntswaki Swanapole, who is also adaptable. <laughs> a very typical uh, snail for that. Hmm... We have some planetary features, we have some industrial and sprawling wasteland, so it seems like uh, we were ruthless in first terraforming the planet. We have some arid highlands for more generator districts, the Searing Desert as well. More generator districts even, with the geothermal winds. Then we have more mining districts, very useful. Prosperous Mesa, mineral fields, the submerged Orwains for even better mining districts, and we have Bountiful Plains. Look, we have a lot of food compared to the other ones. Yeah, we have a little bit more food. Bountiful Plains, two times even. Fertile lands. And black soil. Ooh, very nice. So, let's see, our population is uh, doing well. Uh, here you can see one of the high priests who produces a little bit of society research and a lot of more unity. So, that was going to help us with in with the perfection that we seek, we even get a bonus for that from our government. And we have our specialists here. We have a research lab, alloy foundries, and civilian industries. We have a balanced number of districts. Everything is set. Now, let's go and send our science ship out. Whom do we have here? We have the Carefree Ningao with Anomaly Research Speed plus 35%. That's going to be pretty nice. We'll probably hire a second one once we can afford him. We can look if we can already afford someone or if we have someone special who could be hired there. We have someone ad adaptable is very nice to explore the galaxy as well. Even though 38 is a little bit uh, with fleeting, 
you want maybe something different, someone who is living a little bit longer, like maybe our military theory scientist or a materialist scientist. Then we have a resilient scientist, also very good, uh, a little bit older already, but 25 years more lifespan is very good. We have a genius, Daria Kamenskaya, leading the society research as she should. And we have another resilient snail, Alia Kamenskaya. Note though that uh, the genders of these snails are of course flexible as it is with snails that are usually hermaphrodites. That's also why they're rapid breeders, because every, every two sma snails that could meet can breed, so to say. Um, let's have a look at the map. And why is this called Popma 2? <laughs> I have no I have no clue. Let's rename that thing. Popma 2, really? There's not even a planet called Cop Popma here. Well then, uh Nautilon's second realm. So let's see, we could build something, but we'll wait for that until we have another snail. Let's see. Snail is growing at 4.2 per month. That is quite okay. But that leads us to another thing. After we've set course on this, let's see. Where should we explore? Maybe we should just make a small little round here. Just doing a little survey. Just a little exploration, I mean. So we have an overview of possible new planets. And the other ship that will come can go survey. Our fleet will stay here. We'll have to be alarmed because we have already met humans, as you know, if you have watched the intro. Then we need to look at the policies. That's very important. And that's something I usually forget. <laughs> so we don't want dietary balance. Oh no, we want nutritional plantitude. That's something you always want at the start. Uh, you want to have a little bit more food upkeep because we have good food usually. And a little bit more happiness for that. And pop growth speed. That is extremely important. I don't think that has changed that the pop growth speed is pretty important. Then we have resettlement allowed, orbital bombardment will be selective, war philosophy, we have liberation. We cannot go unrestricted because we're pacifist. Resettlement is allowed, so we can see where we settle our new people forcefully. First contact protocol is peaceful. Because we're pacifists, we don't want any trouble. That's what this represents. Initial border status is closed, we don't want anyone sneaking in here. Economic policy will... Look, ah, they, they've changed that. That's called mixed economy now. Oh no, that's... Ah, okay. Let's see. Yeah, I, th I think they've fixed it. Yeah, mixed economy is best for the start. If we need something direly, like consumer goods or alloys, we might change it, but it's preferable to stay with mixed economy, as you can see. Um, I mean, later on, the alloys are much... Uh, more costly, so later on we'll probably go for a militarized economy, but for the start, mixed economy is best. Then trade policy, we could go wealth creation, we'll start with that as we need the raw food, minerals, energy credits, alloys, we, don't, we, need, we need all of that uh, to expand quickly, and so we'll let it on wealth creation. Later on, consumer benefits can be good, and even later on when the Consumer goods usually become superfluous. You can go marketplace of ideas and that will be pretty great for uh, getting more unity. Robotic workers, uh, we're kind of open to that. We'll have it allowed for now. Maybe we'll outlaw it later to please a faction because uh, they're a little bit a little bit uncanny are these robots for spiritual snails. Population controls, we have them allowed so we can use that. But we we don't need to slavery is allowed i don't think we'll have slaves for now though a displacement only is the purge 
thing we'll do for now because we don't want to get into trouble. So there's that with the policies. Very important to have a policy review from the start. Now let's see what we can do here. Oh, look, that's already a tough decision. Wow, we can go field modulation for more energy credits from technicians. Let's see what that will bring us. 20% more. I always like to view what this gives you. So, we have, from technician jobs, we have 17.45. From the buildings, we have 15. And I think we have to base that on the buildings. So, 20% more of 15 is something like 3 more. 3 more? That, that, wouldn't, be, that wouldn't be too shabby for um, energy credits. So, that would be something nice. More physics research. Mind it, it's only physics research. Let's see what we have there. 17 physics research, but only from researchers, which means... What is that gonna be? Researcher jobs, it's around 9, so it's going to be... Uh, probably not so much. But it's okay. I mean, it's, it's giving us more than the respective... No. I mean, I think 5% research speed is a little bit more powerful because it is in the multiplier. Um, it's just a little bit that you have then, and everything counts. So that would be a little bit more powerful than this, just a little bit, because it's more flexible. Administrative AI. That's not bad. Quantum theory is also pretty good. So it's a very tough decision for now. But I think... We still have a surplus with energy credits. And so... <sighs> I mean, with this, we can build robots. The question is, do we want to build robots sooner or later? Probably we won't, but research speed is very powerful. We could just go for that because it's more flexible. Then we have society research. So same goes for society research, but um, with this, I mean, hydrophonics farms is pretty useful, but we'll not have many for now. Planetary unification is the one we want because it gives us free monthly unity and at the start, just getting something free is pretty great. After that, we can go for the researcher bonus. Then we have engineering research. Let's see what we can do there. Oh, look at that. Minerals from jobs plus 5%. That is very neat. This is also very neat. Nanomechanics, more research from researchers, but um, I think we'll have to go for expansion more quickly. And this offsets our uh, being weak. So we'll have powered exoskeletons coming for the weak and ugly snails. That said, look, we can now turn automation on. That's new here. What do we want to build? At the moment, we want to build... We don't want to build anything. We want to adapt to the situation. We also need to wait until we have enough energy credits to maybe hire another researcher to send him out. So, uh, without further ado, let's, let's explore. Oh no, there's something missing. Uh, we need to have that construction ship here. Set on a, on a sensible course, probably building a mining station here. Because minerals is always the most important thing. And then later, let's see what, what would be the plan. Later on, we could build like that thing here to give us a little bit more energy credits. And then we'll go for the research. Research is always secondary at the start. Except for that one decision I made here. Um, with research speed. Because that is something you don't get that often. And so it can be extremely useful. What do I dare? Do it a little bit faster. So this is Nautilon's second realm, and let's look at our agenda. We want to develop industries. Ooh, wow, nice. We have minerals from jobs, and he has an architectural sense, giving us less building cost. 
and less district cost and better planet build speed with the uber snail naughty the third then we have our explorer's science ship build cost goes down by 25 percent and the normally research speed goes up by 33 percent i think we have the perfect setup for the start first we have that unsurveyed system here no planet here nothing uh yeah, there's an environmental hazard, shield nullification. So you won't have shields in that. That can be good for a defensive station here. Look at that. That's blocking this whole part of the galaxy away. And so you can have a great station here defending. With not many shields, but with high armor. That is always good to have that against the AI that... We'll see if they understand it. Look at that. Send it over here. Ah, <coughs> oh, we have so many minerals coming from our great ruler. Oh no, not slow. Normal is, is the way. I really like the slower paces too, but... I also want to see some things, right? See how we're we doing? Yeah, nutritional plentitude doing its thing, adding a little bit of percentage to the growth process. Oh, and we're getting a lot more energy credits, as you can see, as the pops have settled in, so to say, and the happiness does its thing, of course. Unity is also coming, and what we want to do is we want to first... Uh, look for the galaxy. We're the seekers of Nautilon after all, and uh, we want to dip in to Discovery, at least to boldly go. At least that. And then maybe we'll go expansion. Depending on the planets we get here. Research station output increased by 10% is also very powerful if you don't find a lot of planets. So, we'll see about that. So there's not many planets so far. Also, we have a trinary star system, have you seen? Very nice. The three eyes of Nautilon are watching us. Always have to be watchful. Look, the approval rating. We have rulers, specialists and workers, and they all like us. The workers maybe a little bit least, less, the others a little bit more. Everything is nice now. We're saving most of our minerals at the time for the construction of some stations out here. The stations are the thing that drives you at the start. And we might we might dip in and create something in between here or survey your system in between to gain access to a little bit more. So we have 200 energy credits. Now this thing is ready. And send it out to Concord. Get three more engineering research. Now we can have a look. Adaptable is pretty good at the start. Materials expert. Yeah, I like these expertises. Probably military theory is something we won't need, as we will sp be specializing in general society research with our uh, genius scientist. So we're a little bit more flexible there. Uh, we're also not going for a lot of military at the start, if we can. So we'll leave that be. Uh, this leaves us with Antonella Morales. The materials expert. Let's recruit her. And let's actually build another science ship. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I shouldn't have hired her just yet, but it does make a big difference at the start when you're not over your leader. Uh your leader limitation. So let's see. Hopefully there will be some planets here. I mean... 
We'll find out soon. Ningao is doing what he can. Yeah, oh, look at that! Just as we're getting ready with our new science ship to maybe survey that here. Construction complete. Very, very cool. The Marco Polo with Antonella Morales. Hmm. That's the question, right? Shouldn't we... Now, we'll keep Morales here in the... in the ship for now. She can survey that system first. That's maybe the system where we want to expand first. So, we'll have to look at what we need to do to expand. We need a colony ship. That hasn't changed. We need 200 food. We have that already. We need 200 alloys. We don't have that. We also need to build a station there first. We need 200 um, consumer goods. That won't be a problem as well. So it's rather the alloys that are keeping us at bay for the moment. But we'll see about that. The Armstrong. Wow, really, really good. Look, one Severino world, that's very good for us. A red world, that's still okay for us. Tundra world, I think we'll be able to settle there as well because of our, our high adaptability that we have. As you see, extremely adaptive. So here we go. Nothing's happening. What have we here? Soldar. Oh, a very empty system. Traditions available. Discovery. Yeah. Um, anomaly research speed isn't so important, but we want to go boldly, maybe. The question is, though, I mean, as we're looking for it, there may be a chance we just get a very good expansion going just right now. Let's have a look into that. So we could instantly start with expansion. And I think we'll do that. We'll power up. We'll go for the expansion. As we found three planets here. I mean, that's unheard of. That's really, really good. Also, did you notice there's there's a fog of war? If you go away there, you don't see the planet anymore. I think that's pretty cute. Construction complete. So, what should we continue to do here? Let's see. Do we need these minerals otherwise? I don't think so. Not yet. So, let's build that research station. We have plenty of minerals to go around. Now, there's something to it. Um, to expansion, that is. As you can see here, this needs 360 days. So, a whole year. And if you have the construction ship here, let's see if they've changed it or not. Building a star base is usually a little quicker, so we could start the colony ship and then build build the base there. But we'll have to see if we can time it right. We can fly over and then we'll see what comes first. I like the new mysterious music. Also, will we find artifacts? Ah. Oh, look! There's even more worlds here. A smaller Savannah world and a Tundra world. Probably the next system we're going to have a, a deeper look at. Are you doing here? Scanning nicely. Yeah, you can all only uh, expand there if you survey everything. So, 
We will survey everything. Armstrong is doing well. Also, uh, maybe, let's see... Whom would we want next here? That's the question. I mean, the lawyers would be pretty handy. But I think doing something like the mining district would be bad. So we would have 270 for that. We don't need more food right now, no energy credits, so... That's gonna be what we might go for. Also opens up for later alloys and consumer goods if we produce more minerals. Also this planet will be nice for mining districts. As you can see here there's some blockers. But all in all it, it could be big there. It could be big. At the start it's a little bit about compromises. So here we go. <gasps> We've discovered a new archaeological site. What is that? Difficulty 4! Wow, that's HELL difficulty! <laughs> we won't assign it. We won't assign a scientist yet. <coughs> Déjà vu dig. Scans of Durban 7A uncovered an artificial chamber deep beneath the surface. Its purpose and origin unknown. Magnification revealed an excavated shaft leading from the surface to the subterranean walls. Maybe we can find a hint of Nautilon there. And this picture says something, don't you think? It says something. Do you remember? That is one of the precursors. Further analysis will require sending an expedition down to the surface of Durban 7A. Also, we need... We need a new name for this. Can we rename it? No. Not yet. Not yet. Do that later on. Nice. But we'll need a better scientist for that. Let's start. Also, don't you think there should be a slider at the start for uh, density of archaeological sites or something like that? I think that would be cool. So, I think we can construct the colony ship before. Because we will have the alloys we need. Once that is fully surveyed. Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. So let's start one of these and go. Contact report. Remnants. The administration on Renotilon's favor received the report on the alien remnants with some apprehension. The leavings in question are now widely considered to be definitive proof of unknown forces once having been active in the galaxy, though some prominent notary thinkers reject this in favor of identifying the traces as freak geological formations or results of curious natural phenomena. Remarkable. Oh, the galaxy is so huge, and we're so small. Just tiny snails looking... No, not for friends. Friends are always a suspicious things. We are looking for Construction complete. cover. I think we have built everything we could here. Let's make off to Durban. What will we find next? Yeah, it's probably time then we've just when we've discovered this, then we can go back surveying. So we have our surroundings covered. Oh look, there's not that's nice. There's even a continental world here. That's something where we might be able to do something. Let's Give it some surveying to do. Here we go. The new technology is coming. Not for a very long time. <laughs> we'll look into that though. For example now, because now... 
There is the time. Yeah, it's coming. It's in two months time. We'll have something. Someone. And what would we need? Hmm. Our pops consume 30. I think we have... How many pops do we have? Uh, we have 15 workers. 7 specialists. 2 rulers. That's a total of 24. Consuming 30. Uh, oh yeah, you can see it here as well. Mm. Do we need food? Probably not yet. Do we need minerals or energy credits? Uh, energy credits it could be because of the colony ship, but we'll have a little bit stored, so mm, we could risk it to have another mining district. We could also go for a generator district and playing it safe. I mean, as we want to start a new colony, and that is connected with very high energy credits cost, I think we want to construct a generator district for now. Balance it out a bit. Let's have a look. Oh, the Savannah world. There's a current population here? What? <laughs> There's a current population? Anomaly found. found an anomaly too. Well, at first I want to look at that. What does that mean there's a current population? Districts? No, there's... An, the arid world is free, but... Did I read that wrong? There's a... The Savannah world has a current population of 16 pops! Aliens! At least we can go to the arid world. And probably the tundra world. Yeah, 40% is a little bit iffy, but... Uh, we'll make do. Challenging. We'll leave that be for now. Impressive structures. Litter a small area on the surface of Sadatoni 6A, practically begging for some archaeological work. Later. It's too dangerous so far. An interesting world, though. Now we have 16 there, really? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get nervous, the generator district is coming. Let's fly over here though. Just some maybe possible protection, I don't know. <coughs> So, what, what can we sum, up, sum this up with? We have great planets everywhere around here. Planets here, planets here. We have a mysterious planet with population here. The big savannah world. We might have to invade that. Maybe it's a primitive civilization of dangerous aliens, of great barbarians that want to exterminate our little kids and all kinds of things. Maybe, maybe it's dangerous salad intelligence. We'll have to look at that. We'll have to scan that. We'll find out. We'll find out. Our fleet is already coming. And uh, the setup is okay. We have a small and rather safe circle around here that we can secure on these points here, or rather on these if we want so. So we're set up for a great journey to find Nautilon 
We have good technologies we're looking forward to. They're coming a little slow now, but that will change surely after we've uh, established our outposts here. So uh, with that, I want to say thank you for watching and happy gaming to you. We'll look into the next episode soon where we'll, yeah, I expect to build the colony and maybe another one. And maybe we'll meet some aliens. Have a great time until next time and happy gaming. This is Immanuel Khan signing out. May Nautilon be with you.